Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Civil Force. So today, guys, will be with Group E, Group F roundup, guys. So I'm sorry if this, this video is coming out late, guys. I just, um, you know, by the time I got back home, I needed to do my stream at 7 o'clock. And the reason why I didn't get home at 6 like used to is because I had to do some errands and, you know, that kind of stuff. And by the time I finished the stream, it was time for me to eat dinner. And by the time dinner finished, I was watching the Mexico-Venezuela game. So, you know, I really didn't have enough time to do uh to make the match review before so you know i'm making it now but anyways um i did a live stream earlier so you guys can check that out and see what i said uh but yeah we're gonna go ahead and quickly do a run through for this so we have slovakia one romania one um this game guys in all honesty guys was how do i put the words it was almost like a, where both teams kind of knew that hey a draw would be enough so we kind of just play for a draw you know and it brings me into a larger point, and maybe I might contemplate making a video about this. Um, I'll probably wait for the Euros and Copa America to end, though. Um, actually, I think I'll wait for the Euros to end uh, to do this video. Should we? Is, is the 24 teams really the best representation of the amount of teams we have in Europe? That will be a topic for another time, though. But um, getting back to this game, like Slovakia, that goal was a fantastic goal. Great, great header there from Duda. Great assist there from Kuczka. And they got the goal there. Now, for me, this shouldn't have been a penalty. Maureen, it shouldn't have been a pen. A pen was given, though. And a penalty was given. And I felt like eh, it was just not a really a pen. It wasn't a pen. You know, it was a subjective decision. Um, it sh shimming damage on for Hanko. Yeah, so the penalty was given. And obviously, um, Maureen equalizes there. In the second half, not really a whole lot happened. I mean, you could see here the key highlights. Uh, Maureen first up finds stuff from Dubrovka. Slovakia fly forward. And that they had some chance there, really had there. Um, and yeah, so the thing is like for this one is that my criticism with both teams that Slovakia for me, they just don't offer enough goals. I feel like my issue with Slovakia is that they only just play for one goal and then they go defensive. Whereas for Romania, they just don't have enough goals in them, but they defend so well as a unit. So uh, congratulations to Romania for topping this group. That's an incredible achievement for them. Their second ever win. Euros, and I have to apologize because they proved me wrong massively. I doubted them badly in my predictions. I said they would finish bottom of the group, but the fact that they topped the group is only right I have to apologize. So congratulations to them. They defied the odds, and I'm happy to be proven wrong. You know, I'm happy to be proven wrong. And if you look at the side of the bracket that Romania is on, they're in a pretty favorable side of the bracket. Like, they have Netherlands um, in the round of 16, and Netherlands have been kind of a bit underwhelming so far. So they could, they could like their chances in that game. It's not too far-fetched. Anyways, moving to the next game we got here. It is Ukraine nil, Belgium nil. Ah, Belgium. Belgium, Belgium, Belgium. What do I have to say about this Belgium golden generation? Because Belgium underperformed. I'm sorry. The first half, I thought it was a pretty even game. I think Belgium had their fair amount of chances. They had obviously more possession. But you can just see with Belgium, it's just like looks so bad attacking-wise. And it's crazy because the amount of attacking talent Belgium have is unbelievable. As for Ukraine, I thought you could maybe argue there was a slightly better team. They had the better chance. Yarmin Chuk was close to scoring there. Sudakov. Um, and yeah, Dolbrick as well. But the thing for Belgium is that they were just so poor, lack, uh, lackluster attacking wise. The second half, though, was disgraceful. Belgium should have scored those two goals, uh, should have scored those chances. Obviously, Carrasco had that effort there, 73rd minute. Uh, then Doku. Um, and then obviously, um, let me show you guys right there, Lukaku. But then it felt like Belgium. After the after like the 80th minute, it felt like, you know what? We're going to just play for the draw. We'll play for the draw and go super defensive. And Ukraine took the initiative and said, you know what? We, now it's time for us to actually go for this. And they actually created a lot of general, uh, genuine opportunities in the last couple of minutes, but they weren't able to come. Sudakov there with the effort in the 91st minute. And then obviously Dolbrik there, 75th, it was blocked. But yeah, Ukraine, man, they just went all in in the last couple of minutes and it just wasn't to be and. That Sudaka was probably the best chance they had. And for Ukraine, as I said, man, it's disappointment. They go out the group stage with four points on the fact of goal difference. And it's, it's so sad because they actually had a better head-to-head -head than you, than Slovakia. And um, Belgium had a better head-to-head -head against Romania. But it wasn't to be. And for Ukraine, man, to bow the group stage and four points is pretty sad. Considering that Slovenia and Denmark advanced with three points. So... They'll be aggrieved, and I believe they're the first nation to exit of the uh, Euros with four points in a modern 2014 format. So since 2016, this is the first time. So commiserations to Ukraine. I actually feel really bad uh, for them because I actually thought they played decent. But it's just that match opening match they lost to Romania pretty much sealed it. As for Belgium, I'm very unimpressed with them. They qualified 
Um, but they just did the bare minimum. They did the bare minimum, not convinced with Belgium. Their attack was so horrendous. Defensively, it were okay. But yeah, they were just poor. They were just poor. And for Belgium, as they finish second, they're punished for it. And now they'll be playing against uh, France. And I think that's a difficult match for them. And of course, their neighbors, neighboring countries, uh, France. That'll be a very interesting one. Take place. Of course, I'll do my round of 16 predictions, most likely on Friday. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's move to the next game, guys. Let's move uh, to the next game we got here. It is uh, Georgia to Portugal now. Now, for this game, man. It's hard for me to really judge Portugal in this game since Portugal really had nothing to play for. Uh, but it is concerning that a certain a certain Portuguese man by the name of Cristiano Ronaldo decided to play this game. Now, I have no idea why Ronaldo wanted to play this game. It doesn't make any sense for me because there was no and there was no incentive for because Portugal had already topped the group. They already secured. So even if they had lost this game and Turkey's won their game, like let's say a 10 no margin, it wouldn't have mattered because head-to-head -head is a tiebreaker here. So I just don't understand why Ronaldo really wanted to play this game. I guess he thought to himself, you know what? If I play this game, maybe I'll be with a stat pad, which I respect, you know. But it is concerning that Ronaldo has yet to score in the Euros. In fact, this is actually the first time he's not scored in a group stage of a major international tournament, which is pretty embarrassing for a player of his stature. But remember, you have to keep in mind, he is pretty old. He is um, 39 years old, so we have to keep in mind the guy is pretty much at his last legs. And let's be real, Ronaldo, he probably shouldn't be playing the Euros, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, maybe we'll touch upon that another time. But anyways, get back to Georgia. They played a fantastic game. Um, they were fantastic in the day. Antonio Silva made a horrendous mistake early on. Kovac Scali, uh, Mekatos passed off, pa for, uh, intercepted it. And then he passed to Kovac Scali, and Kovac Scali makes it 2-1-0. Uh, then a penalty was given there on Antonio Silva. And um, for me, this was a bit of a soft pen. I don't really agree with it. Kovac Scali, then Mikatoa steps up, scores a pen to make it 2-0. And for George, as I said, they had some more chances to make it 3-0. or 3-0, uh, but like I said... Uh, Georgia were just going pretty defensive, and yeah, the the, the defensive shape was key. And um, as for uh, it, it, Portugal, they had a lot of their chances. I think Ronaldo had a free kick saved, but other than that, not really anything significant for Portugal. They didn't really create any genuine opportunities. And like I said, with Portugal, we can't really judge them too much because it was practically their B team playing. So um, that for Portugal, as I said, man, they're gonna have to massively improve because they really did underperform in this um, group stage. So. Um, not really much to say there. Now, move on to the Czech Republic Turkey 2. Now, this one was actually pretty interesting. Oh, I actually want to say something real quick. Georgia actually made history. So, with the fact that they won that game, they actually made the round of 16 for the first time ever as debutants, which is a pretty incredible achievement. So, you had to give them full plops to that because that's an incredible achievement. And their very first Euros. Moving to Czech Republic Turkey, guys. For this game, guys, I really am. It's such a shame because I actually thought Czech Republic played really well. But it's just their finishing was so off, you know. And for me, that red card to bar pretty much put everything at the uh, seal. Because then they were up against it. They had to be more defensive. Obviously, with the man sent off, it was going to be a natural. And it was so hard for Czech Republic because they need that potent striker. They don't have it. They don't have Schick. Schick is injured. And I think Schick brings so much um, goal scoring avenue to this team. They really need a Schick, you know. That first goal, great, great go goal there from Chalano. A bit of an unfortunate there because the goalkeeper maybe it could have done better, but they didn't need he did got injured. So you'll say got the sister Chalanahu. And then the set and that equalized the equalizer that was shambolic defending by uh, Turkey. Shambolic defending. Like, how do you concede a goal from that position? It was like literally a throw in, and it, it was a bit of a scrapple there in the box. And he was tucked in by Suchek to make it 1 0. And sure, some people say, oh, there's a foul in the goalkeeper, stuff like that. And it doesn't matter. It, it's still a poor goal to concede. Go, uh, go neck, man. I don't know what he was doing. And then the then the second goal was scored by Tosan. Uh, coach, you got there with assist coming off the bench again. That crucial assist. And for Portugal, uh, for Turkey, as I said, man, they play very expensive football. But my goodness me, their defense is so sketchy. Their defense is so so sketchy, and they really need Soyuncu. Soyuncu needs to be fit because Turkey, man, they need their defenders back because if their defense isn't fully fit, it's going to be very hard for them for them to go far in this Euros. As for Czech Republic, they played a pretty good game. They almost they almost managed to get uh, score some goals right at the end, but it just wasn't to be. And yeah, I think for Czech Republic, man, uh, it was so sad because they played they played so well, but it's just they couldn't. Uh, they just couldn't finish. They couldn't finish. And because if we actually look at the overall stats, 
despite going down a man, they actually created, if you actually look at the overall stats, 12 shots, 7 on target. They actually create a lot of good opportunities this game. They just weren't clinical, even down a man. Whereas for uh, Turkey, they actually had a man advantage with 18 shots, 5 on target. So you kind of expect more, a better performance from Turkey. But yeah, that's just how it is. So congratulations to Turkey. They advanced around 16 at second place. Uh, with the head-to-head over Georgia, and for uh for uh, for Czech Republic, man, they bowed the group stage fourth place, which is really really unfortunate because they played well. But yeah, anyways, that's my Euros uh, recap for you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Please let me know if there's any major target points in the comment section below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.